Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Music Production Podcast, the show about all things making music, and I'm your host, Brian Funk. On today's show, I have Adam Rockshar. Adam is a musician, producer, artist, psychologist, a man of many talents. Um, we go way back. We did a TechServe presentation, which TechServe was uh, long closed, where we were talking about Ableton. You're doing Max for Live and yeah. a lot of visual stuff. We've I think we met in that scene, right? I think so. And then that we, a Warper parties. I don't know if you used to do yeah, those. Oh yeah, yeah. Warper party might be the other yeah. spot too, where we were hanging out. Because then we also had some venue in Williamsburg that we were at I at one that. point, um, which we can't remember, and I don't think it's there anymore. No, <laughs> <laughs> they all kind of blend together after a while. Yeah. Um, but he's doing lots of great work. He's got a new album coming out under the name Rashcore, R A S H K O R. That's his name backwards, and mm -hmm. some cool. <laughs> digital art um, as aesthetic candy. Um, yeah, so much cool stuff, man. It's, it's nice. really great to see you, talk to you again. Yeah. We've, been, we've spent about a half hour now just kind of catching up before we knew it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's fun to connect with you again. Yeah, it's, it's good to see you. Yeah, likewise, likewise. Um, I always appreciate you know, that you're someone who's like comfortable kind of talking art, but also kind of talking process, which is like really exciting to me. Yeah, I, and I think that's something like uh, you're into quite a bit too. Definitely. And, and you're in a couple different mediums, which I'm kind of interested to like learn like how some of those like general concepts, yeah, you know, work across the board. That's the stuff that fascinates me, honestly. Whoops, I just fell out of no, my chair. I, <laughs> I feel you. Like that cross the cross crossing um, art genres or art forms is mm. like for me really liberating. And really fun because you start start seeing um, that there are similarities. Like so, for me, I started in music and uh, you know played played guitar in high school and sang and all that stuff. And music was my main my main art form and also like kind of like my main identity as a creator. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm a musician. That's what I do. Had a band in New York. After that ended, I made like electronic music, performed a bunch. That's like when we got to know each other, and I was also starting to make software using Max for Live inside of Ableton, um, which was great because it let me make, basically make plugins without having to um, learn the more complicated way of making plugins, which would be like you know writing your own code in C++. So let me use Max to do it. So yeah, so I was making these plugins. And I, the reason why I'm mentioning that now is because I feel like that was the beginning of me starting to explore being an artist without just making music. So like there I'm using, you know, Max, which is a very artist friendly programming language, a visual one. And uh, wait, have you used Max at all? I, not too much. I've done very basic stuff. Uh, with, that's uh, my dog, Bandit. Cool, Bandit, what's up? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not so much into that. Um, I've done like some mm. beginner stuff. I made a filter, bit crusher, okay. you know. But do you use the Max for live devices? Oh yeah. So you know the, how on the user end, like the fun that can be had with those. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? Like, I mean, there's so many things you can do with yourself. You sort of have to pick something after a while. Right. And there's people like you making so many great devices. And I, it's not like I have these ideas that I, yeah. I oh, for my... You know, if I could put a, like, you know, you have like the, the glitch GIF one right. where you can put GIFs and images in there and they start like melting and moving around to your music. Like I just never thought of that. And if yeah. I do think of it, someone has already done something like that. So Right, or you could collaborate with someone who already has that skill set so you can yeah. stay focused on what you like yeah. doing. Yeah, and that, yeah, that makes like sense to me. A conscious decision for me it was like, you know, I don't have that experience anyway. Right. So. Yeah, it's like you only have so much time. But that said, I end up just wandering around so much like in between different um, mm -hmm. mediums. And like uh, for me, I think like when I first found Max, there was some immediate like recognition that there was something about this that I wanted to get into. Um, but uh, I, <laughs> I didn't, it took me a while to get into it. And when I did, like what ended up happening was I really got into using it to make visual stuff. Mm -hmm. I really liked that you could make like real time 
visuals in Macs. And I think I started first by like, you know, loading in movies, video files, and then like processing them in real time. But I was really into this idea of like, well, what if the filters you put on a video or the filters you put on an image, what if they were controlled by sound? Like that was like kind of the link to me. And I, I always just wanted to make visuals for my shows. And um, exploring that was super fun. And it, before I knew it, I was like, oh, I guess I'm doing visual stuff. Like, you know, I, I kind of felt like a imposter just going into that space. Cause I was like, I never did any of this before. But like, I had this angle you know, I was interested in, the relationship between the, what you're seeing and what you're hearing. And um, that ended up being like a true life-changing uh, thing for me, uh, literally, because uh, I started making all these visual devices and um, at one of those TechServe talks, um, uh, Dennis DeSantis from Ableton, who wrote that great book, um, that like pro book about like process and like uh, kind of like creative exercises. I forgot that's called. Oh, you got it right I there. Have it within reach. <laughs> that I mean, that reminds me of that book. Reminds me of like the stuff that you're into because mm -hmm. I feel like that's. I love this the, book. That book is amazing. Yeah. And um, anyway, he was in the audience. He liked the visual stuff, and then kind of like before I knew it, I had a partnership with Ableton, and I was doing my first. Um, I like was releasing my first like uh, Max for Live device for people to use. That was called Rockvid, and did really well. So like uh, I was able to focus on, I spent a few years just working on making Max for Live devices. So I was like, this is my job now. I'm, I have, a, this is a company. I partnered with my friend, Nate Rodriguez, who's a talented musician and also a, a, a 3D artist. Um, and um, we were making stuff. It was fun, but also hard to sell things. Uh, I, it was easy when Ableton partnered with me because they just put it on their website in their store and everyone goes to Ableton's store. You don't need any marketing money for that. But all the ones that we were releasing independently, a lot of work was going to them and they were not like producing as much money. If I was more educated then about how to run a business, I think we could have done it differently. But I'm not like into that, <laughs> I like yeah. wanted to make stuff. And I just was hoping if you make something good enough, someone will just give you a bag of money. Um, mm -hmm. And that wasn't quite like that, but I did um, kind of fall into a good position because um, the stuff I was making caught the attention of some uh, some people who were, were already had their own music tech company and they hired me and they hired my friend Nate to come and do kind of like research and development for them. And I ended up spending like a few years in like the kind of like the tech startup music space. Um, and it was during that time that I was no longer like hustling with trying to sell Max for Live devices. And I had like a regular paycheck and things were calming down that my friend Nate started to explore with working with 3D animation. And I saw him playing with that. And I was like, I definitely want in on this. So. Uh, you know, he helped me get started. And that job I had initially gave me a lot of uh, downtime. It was kind of a weird job. And uh, I was able to just be at work learning 3D animation hmm. and uh, was loving it. It was, it was like, it just, it was, I don't want to say it clicked in the sense that I was good at it because I wasn't, but it clicked in the same way that there was a moment of recognition that I had when I saw Max, that there's like, there's something in this for me. Hmm. I feel like, some tools just resonate with you as a creator, you know, just because of like who you are, your past, whatever it is. And like, I just feel like it's sort of like my job to honor that when that happens. And um, that ended up being a good thing to honor because working in 3D has been intensely gratifying as an artist, has ended up becoming uh, the art that is pro I'm probably most recognized for after years and years of trying to get anyone to listen to my music, it was way easier to get people to look at an animation I made, which then became vehicles for music and it's all totally entwined. And now, you know, I'm making, I uh, make a living between freelancing, doing 3D animation work and then teaching music at NYU. So it kind of all came together that way. Um, and I've learned just everything I've learned from 3D has just been like, as I go, uh, at first just on my own and with my friend Nate, and then 
as more like uh, uh, more community spaces started opening up, like through Slack and Discord, I like moved into those spaces and are members of different groups with other 3D animators and like a lot of skill sharing and like knowledge started to get like accumulated through there. That's a great story. I love it. Yeah, it was a long, I don't remember what you asked me, but that's what, uh, <laughs> that's what well, happened. You kind of filled it in a little bit because um, I think the last time I saw you, you were just working out those deals to produce for Ableton. That's with, exactly uh, what Rock was going Fit, on. Rockfit and you yeah. know, that was starting to happen. Yeah. And uh, then I, I kind of didn't see you for a while. Yeah, and here we are. And you know, what's interesting is to me is that like, I think that every time I try to become a business, uh, it goes poorly. But every time I just focus on trying to like make something that I am genuinely interested in, there ends up so far to some extent being um, a business aspect of it, like some way to make money with it. Mm. And like uh, Rockvid was just something I made on the train to visit a friend of mine who needed visuals for a show at a cafe that no one ended up going to. Um, but like <laughs> it had this like create a uh, life afterwards. And, uh, yeah. and, and then uh, likewise, I got into the 3D art just because it looked compelling to me and it happened at a moment when I needed a break from music. Mm -hmm. I had just released an album that I had really like labored over called uh, Everything Reminds Me of Something Else. And it was really personal and came from a really difficult like life moment where there was like uh, stuff going on in my family, dealing with addiction and mental health intense mental health crisis. And then there was like a breakup in my life and just a lot of bad stuff was occurring at once. And like f from that, I wrote this album that was really like, I really like, put my whole self very directly into it. And um, when I finished it, I was kind of like that, it was weird. That album made me feel good while making it. And then it made me just really sad to like return to it. I tried playing it live once and I was like, I'm never playing this live again. Mm. Like it just, this was like a cathartic release. This was not meant for me to return to over and over. And I, I got to this point where even just like playing the guitar was kind of bumming me out. I felt like oh. a lot of the harder parts of my life I coped with using music and somehow like that stuff had like kind of become associated mm. with the tools themselves. And I needed something different. And I also was really tired of laboring for a really long time, like privately on this like intimate thing. And then just like suddenly releasing it and just having very few people hear it. And I'm really grateful that few people heard it at all, like my friends, you know, but like, I, I don't know if other people feel this way, but at that time, every time I made something, I was like, this thing feels like a big step forward for me. I really hope it busts open and people hear it. And it, it often doesn't. And so when I learned the 3D tools, I was like, I'm gonna start an Instagram account that is based on the very opposite of everything I've done as a musician. I'm gonna make my pieces very fast. I'm gonna make them be meaningless and I'm gonna make them like out loud, meaning I'd make it, post it, the, the, the time between the concept and an audience encountering it, I want it to be as short as possible. Hmm. Now that all changed, like that medium has become very meaningful to me, but that was like how I entered into it as a reaction sort of against where I was with music. And all of that has changed. Like I am making music again. Um, I am finding that 3D art is like a really expressive medium for me. Um, but I had to like move away from music and I stopped making Max for Live devices. I wasn't doing any coding in that time period. I was just doing 3D art. And I was kind of like, maybe I'm done with music. I don't know what's gonna happen. Hmm. Wow, but that's interesting. Um, I think anyone here that's ever released anything knows that feeling a little <laughs> bit, right? Of like, even if it's just a track or if it's an album yeah. or whatever, you, you do, you pour yourself into it a lot of times. Um, and, and often it's just a scroll in someone's it feed. Is. And um, yeah, it, the feed it can is be ephemeral. depressing. I, I've, yeah. I've recently come across a couple people online like, 
writing about that, people that are very new to making music, they say, oh, you know, I finally finished this and no one listened to it. Yeah. And it's kind of like, oh. <laughs> welcome well, to the party, my friend. The, <laughs> <laughs> now you're a producer. <laughs> well, you know, this is where I think it, you get really tested as a creator. Yeah. And you have to kind of ask yourself what, you're, what this is about for you. Mm-hmm. And like, I think you have, I had to be really honest with myself. Like, do I want to, do, would I do this if I knew for sure no one was ever going to hear it and I was going to make no money from it? Would I do it anyway? Like I had, and there were times I was like, no, absolutely not. It takes so much work. Uh, I have carpal tunnel from doing this. You know, I've got like, like injuries from playing guitar my whole life. Like I'm breaking my body over it. I'm not going to do it. Um, and then there were times when that answer changed. And actually for me now, like I'm really invested in, I, I know who I am in a sense as an artist, like mm-hmm. meaning I always know that I'll make art. I don't know what form it will take, but like, I just know that's always a part of me. And actually really letting go of some of that other baggage about what it's for has made it so much more fun, so much more free. I do not know if anyone's gonna listen to, for example, the new album I put out, or that I'm about to put out, but like I had the most fun making that album of any Thing I've, any album I've made. Um, and it's still personal and like real and all that. But like, I just like made it being like, what if I just don't like, what if, what, what, what is it really like to make something that is pleasing to me? Mm-hmm. Like, and I, I, it, that was not an overnight thing. That, that was like years of ruminating on what that might mean and trying things out and like really digging into myself to like answer some questions about, you know, what is the point of an album for me? Mm. And I, I came to this place where the album is like an all the art that I make really just feels like for me, it's an important like artifact of like a process. And the process is the thing that I'm like most invested in, but the artifacts need to kind of just fall out of that process. Like they're dropping out of your pocket on the journey because they're the only record you have of the process happening. And they're also the, um, the process happens through making things. So mm-hmm. like, I really am trying to like unite with that process. I'm gonna make things, I'm gonna share them. It's part of the part of it. Uh, I learn more that way. It's just like when you get up on stage finally and play your song live for the first time, you're like, whoa, that intro is way too long. Yeah. And you like, couldn't, you had no idea all those other times you were working yeah. on it until you're sharing it. Something changes with, with there being an audience. And like, I think that's why this process requires you sharing. But for me, it's, a, it's really a process of like, of growing as a human. Mm. Uh, like I, I do think that's what it is. Um, what that means to me versus someone else is gonna be totally different. What it means to me today in a year from now will be different. But like, to me, like art is like that process of just developing yourself. Yeah. I like that way of thinking about it at where the process is sort of the king. And, yeah. and whatever comes out of it is what comes out of it. And that's it. Because um, it's funny that the word artifact has art in it as totally. well. Totally, yeah. I, don't, yeah. I, I should look into that. What is, I don't know where that word comes from. Hmm. Like I, I've always find linguistically. that when you get into the etymology of words and start seeing where they come from, there's a lot of history and, and a lot of like interesting connections where you're like, oh, damn, look at that. Yeah, like art inside of artifact. I mean, it makes sense to me. Yeah artisan, like all these like funny connections. Yeah. But uh, it also like is, it's kind of, I find that a relief when I can get there. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of times when I'm trying to make music or whatever, and I'm really focused on getting it done and the product yeah. and what it is. And yeah, sometimes sure. that's great too. I, that's the process really, right? But Right, right. But the, when you just sort of trust, like if I get on this road and I, like things will, like you said, fall out of your pocket and things yeah. will amount from it. I it's, mean, uh, it's helpful, it's comforting. There's a, there's a way. I agree. And I feel like it's comforting and also hard. Like I mm-hmm. do not want to like misrepresent myself as like this, like being like super chill with letting the thing flow. Like there's so much tr- struggle in it. Otherwise- I'm sure we're talking about a period of, uh, 10 years yes. since, since like, or so roughly, yeah. you know? Yeah, so. that's, a, that's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. And, uh, 
But I, but to your point about, um, yeah, just like it, like a sense of ease with like when you can reach this mindset. Like one thing that I've been really trying to practice and really informed my new album and kind of came from doing 3D in fast cycles of like making things fast and sharing them is like, I've really come to this point where I do not think it matters at all. Like if I think the art is good that I make, mm -hmm. I've come to think that that idea of me like assessing it is like completely uh, a side thing. That's not like my job to worry about it. It's right. my job to make it and share it and keep going. I like that. I really don't, because. I've had this experience, this happens over and over again, especially on Instagram with making animation. I'll make something fast. I think it's dumb. It's like a hit, people love it. It means things to them. I labor on something, I'm like, oh, this is the one. This is gonna crack this whole game wide open. Uh, <laughs> you put it up there and people are like, this is okay. And what that says to me is that it doesn't, I my judging what it is, is really irrelevant. Like, uh, and I can save myself some energy. Um, I think part of the reason why concretely, my opinion of the, the work doesn't really matter is that uh, if in fact, like making art is like a process of growing, uh, when you're growing, the thing that you're about to become, like you're not it yet. And you may be making something that a very near future iteration of you loves but you are not that iteration yet. You can only see it from your perspective today. And that's limiting. So like, I need to make room for my current editor inside myself to um, get replaced <laughs> by the next editor, you know, that comes along. And there's always that editing voice telling you what to do, like uh, for me anyway. But like, it's kind of this idea of, like, do you wanna be, would you rather be um, like, the person today that you right now imagine to be like a great version of yourself? Or would you rather be the great version of yourself that you imagined when you were like 15? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't wanna be beholden to older ideas. Like, like 15 year old me would have been like, loved it if I was like, you know, following Pearl Jam around everywhere, um, <laughs> like fighting against Ticketmaster still, um, you know, like no responsibilities except just like, just the music, man. And like, I kind of, you kind of have to get to the point where you're like, I see that, I totally respect where that kid was coming from, but I'm in a different place. There's mm -hmm. different things that matter to me right now. And I feel like in a much smaller, uh, less exaggerated way that happens when you like make pieces. Like often my, least favorite one becomes my favorite one when a few years go by mm. because I like I had to kind of like grow to catch up to my own taste. So I always like tell my students like don't worry if you're making bad stuff just keep making because that could be your favorite stuff later or it could have just been like the artifacts on the way to you dropping something that you love actually. It's just but you can't just go right for it. You're not like really in charge that way. Mm. Yeah, that's a great point and um you, I have a like a list of these like musical philosophies I, mm. I keep that are the yeah. artistic things. One of them is outsource criticism. Oh, that's perfect. And that's, uh, it reminds me of this because that's exactly it. You're you're like off the hook now. You don't have to be the judge, and it's yeah, almost impossible judge. for me to do. But that's why I had yeah. to write it down. <laughs> well, know? yeah. I mean, these are a lot of these feel like like asymptotes you can approach, but you yeah. cannot quite get. But like, I love the idea of outsourcing it because everyone else will be. Can, they're it's, happy it's a same, to offer it. <laughs> yes, exactly. And you're it's lucky a, if they offer it, actually. Even, true, because it know, means they listened enough. The worst would be that they'd have nothing to say about it. Which is usually what happens. Yeah. Because it just goes into a feed. And you don't have the marketing budget of uh, like, you know, the people who get played all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure a lot of people have that experience of coming back to something that you abandoned yeah. You know, and being like, wow, why didn't I ever finish that? This is great. Totally. But you kind of like hear what, what it was uh, without whatever insecurity you were feeling at the time surrounding it. Yeah, the thing it, you that, were caught up in. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a great approach to, it's not my job. <laughs> yeah, it really, it's fun. Because when I hear that voice, I'm like, thank you for stopping by. But yeah, the work you isn't work needed here. right now. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. We outsource that job, um, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> That's funny. But yeah, the yeah, voice comes fired, back. So. Yeah, you're fired. You got a, you got no severance. You're just out. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I appreciate it because that voice is usually not necessarily trying to make you make better art. It's usually just trying to spare you from social embarrassment. Um, oh, right. That's usually what that thing's job is. Mm. And, but I don't usually, I don't know what it's like for you, but I, I don't really feel like I've been in a situation where I made something so bad that there was like a social consequence for how bad it was. Because usually bad stuff just vanishes from people's mm. experience. You're like, you know, I've never scrolled through my Instagram and been like, whoa, that post, the aesthetic value of that post was so low that I've changed what I thought of that person. You might stop yeah. when you see something that makes you angry. Like I'm not talking about like um, making something that feels ethically or morally <laughs> uh, right. quote bad, but I'm just talking about like you made your song and it wasn't a bop. Like I, yeah. there isn't really any social consequence for that. That is like as big to you as it seems like it might be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I th- you, and I like the way you put that. It's that critic is almost there for the point of saving you from social criticism rather than make totally. the better art. Yeah. Yeah, they have a different I, job, but they, they masquerade I, I, as I know that musicians. well. I've I've been doing something and then I start thinking like, oh, everyone's gonna find out that I'm not a good singer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm not a good guitar player or I'm yeah. not or I don't know every key command or whatever. Right. Whatever <laughs> weird insecurity I can yeah. think up. Which you you know, if, if, Anyone's like me, you're pretty good at thinking them up. <laughs> yeah, really good at thinking them up. I mean, the, it's funny you talk about the singing thing. Do you know um, Do you know the musician and visual artist, Ben, uh, ben Levin? I think that's no, I don't think so. Yeah, Ben, uh, I, know, I know him through Instagram. I only know about him because um, there's this YouTuber named Andrew Wong, who's like a big yes. like, music production guy. I have a uh, note here to... Mention your you did the art for his yeah. music video uh, yeah. Sparkle Mountain exactly. Which I, did, I was but, so stoked to see him <laughs> say he had he had you doing the the uh, the visuals for that. I mean that was awesome. That was he was that was fun to work with and like a huge like it became a huge project. Um, mm-hmm. And when it, when we when I finished it and went up on YouTube, you know he's got like two million subscribers. Yeah. So all these comments oh, yeah. start coming in, and I kept seeing people being like. Did like Ben Levin make this? This looks like Ben Levin made this. And I was like, who's Ben Levin? And I went over and checked out his stuff and it was awesome. And we've been chatting you know, periodically through uh, through like Instagram ever since then. But I mentioned because Ben had a great post recently about um, having a bad singing voice. So did Andrew actually. They both were talking about this. Yeah, and yeah, I saw that video that, that Andrew did, yeah. Yeah, I loved Andrew's take on it. And Ben had like- Sing I think, anyway, like, yeah. Sing anyway, and I think Ben's, said something in, it was on Instagram. He sometimes posts these screenshots of like thoughts on a notes app that I really love. Um, and it was on one of those, but like, I don't know, I think there's something that I, I, I don't always know what my students think of this when I'm teaching music, but like, I also feel like, haven't we heard enough good singers? <laughs> like, like how many more do we need? Like it's if you can sing well, that's awesome, and that's you using your voice. But like, just use your voice. Just yeah. like like, I think of a I loved um, and it's like part of my age, I guess. But like I love the uh, Pavement, the band Pavement, mm-hmm. and I love Dave Berman and Silver Jews, who was also in Pavement. That was like his side project, and Dave Berman had that great line where he sings all my favorite singers couldn't sing, and like. I love that. Like, I, I'm really drawn to like the ways that like people sort of fail at being like quote unquote good. And as I just sometimes think there's a lot more like emotion in that to me. Um, I, I agree with that totally. I mean, some of my favorite singers aren't gonna make the first cut on American Idol. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <you> know? <laughs> and that's a different, that's looking for something different. It's looking for something totally different, yeah. And I, I just feel like so excited right now by how much music is happening in like micro communities and like tiny spontaneously forming genres like all over the world as people are like connecting. And like, I want to be, I want to like bring something unique into those spaces rather than I do not want to like try to win at like 
like a Universal Records or like like some sort of like major label game. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I don't. Well, first of all, I don't think I'm even eligible to <laughs> to to, to uh, enter into that game anymore. But uh, I just like am really interested right now in like what as an artist, like what can I uniquely just bring to yeah. the space? And I encourage my students to do that. And like oh, so many times people in my classes will make something for the first time. They'll have like never made anything. They use like GarageBand or they'll use like Audacity to make it. And it's amazing, like mm-hmm. right out of the gate, but they think it sucks because it doesn't sound like what they right. wanted it to sound like. And they're measuring it in reference to this like ideal And I often feel like sometimes, and this is definitely true for me, that I made good stuff in the very beginning. And then I made a lot of stuff I don't really value for a while afterwards because I started getting better at copying like my idols. And then there had to be this process of sort of being like, okay, well, if if I know how to do that, what now? Like, Mm -hmm. how how can I really, to really be like an idol for me, would it really be to find a like unique point of view from which to make something? Yeah, uh, right. there's a lot of amazingly produced music that sounds super clean, and the best players, the best singers, mm-hmm. and it's impressive. And it, I can enjoy that stuff for that, for what it is, and listening to something at that level of just polish. Yeah, but I don't. That's not what I listen to when I want to feel it. You know? Yeah, what have you been and listening I'll, to for that? Anything oh, fun man. lately? Uh, lately, um. I've kind of winded down a little bit on my cars kick, <laughs> which is also oh. is actually very slick, honestly. But there's yeah, still, it is slick, but it's but, idiosyncratic. You know, those voices, the singing. I mean, that's a lot of yeah, exactly. And idiosyncratic is a good word. Um, not, I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of all over the place. Yeah, a lot of random stuff. But I always come back to like some of my favorites, like. Lou Reed, Neil Young, yeah, like these yeah. aren't people you're gonna see yeah. on American Idol, but no. they're they're some of my favorites. Um, I so, can like, see the Lou Reed influence now that I I didn't know that for you. <laughs> now that I'm thinking back to seeing you perform like ten years ago, I can feel yeah. that impact there. Yeah, as I read yeah. you wearing the sunglasses on stage is kind of like I was reading it a different way, but now I have. Lou Reed as a reference point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'd love like if you listen to him sing. He, he sometimes he's just talking. Yeah. And he's just kind of like approaching the notes. Have and, you seen? And the phrasing is just incredibly cool. It's so cool. And it's like, so him, right? Like you could try to copy him, but you're just gonna sound like you're copying him. <laughs> um, have you watched, uh, I'm obsessed with the Instagram catatonic youths. Are you familiar with that? No. Oh my God. I'll put it down. Brian, get ready. Uh, it's, a, it's a very funny, cringy account of <laughs> like just musicians being musicians. And uh, there's a great clip on there. It's things like, uh, just like as an example, there's like a, things like, you know, Billy Joel having a temper tantrum on stage and like swearing <laughs> and smashing the microphone, um, Long Island representing. But then there's, uh, there's one with Lou Reed singing It's a Perfect Day and he's doing exactly what you're describing like that type of style, but he's singing with one of those four, one of the four tenor guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> who comes in with this, it's a perfect day. And it's hilarious for the juxtaposition yeah. of these voices. And the one who comes off, in my opinion, looking not cool there is not Lou Reed. It's, mm. uh, it's the really well-trained guy who's oh, very famous. A little out of place, yeah. A little out of place, bring the wrong spirit, I think. Right. Yeah, I mean, so, that's, I, and I have my class I teach uh, at Berkeley online. It's a oh, sampling nice. class. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's, it's a great class and it's always a good group of people. And, you know, I, no one learns more than me. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm going you. through everyone's, I think that's when you're a teacher. Uh, yeah. If you're a good one anyway, I think you're, you're learning the most. Oh, totally. What are you teaching particular software or is it more? No, it's more like sampling techniques inside live. That's so cool. there's a lot of software, you know, how to use the, but it's a lot more like thinking creatively and, huh. you know, noticing cool yeah. sounds yeah. and all of that. And um, that's, 
that kind of stuff has been, I've been doing that for so long. With That's awesome. Packs, you should do, you know? if you want to come do a guest lecture in my Ableton production class at NYU. I'd love it. It'd be great yeah, to have you talk time. about sampling stuff. We could talk about that uh, later, but. Cool, yeah, awesome maybe we you. can do a cross guest lecture. Yeah, I would love <laughs> like that. Something. I'm mean, telling yeah, you let's, let's, let's do that for yeah. real. Um, but I'm always kind of like asterixing everything I say with, yeah. uh, keep in mind, I enjoy when things are a little dirty yeah. and a little yeah. out of key and a yeah. little <laughs> off time, you know? Um, that to me is fun. That's like, those are the people. Yeah, you know, doing it, and I, feel I that really way. think in in this day and age where computers can make convincing music, you can there yes. are computers that make music in the style of the Beatles, and it kind I of sounds like the Beatles. I was just doing this last but, night. I was using a, the AI for making making music last night. Yeah, jukebox, but like it's uh, Open AI jukeboxes. Yeah, go ahead. But the computer is never going to have the mop top. <laughs> You no, know? no, no, <laughs> and and cause like a generation of kids to get that haircut. Yeah, probably or, not. Although you never know, people do love. Um, <laughs> they do. I, I I had never even heard of VTubers until recently, like virtual YouTubers. But like, there. I mean, there are like kind of fake, or I would say not fake. There are, uh, and just personality constructions that people are into. Really. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. But I, I do hear- Never mind. <laughs> no, but look, look I, agree, I agree. So I'm someone who's like very pro all the new tools. Like I like the AI yeah. and all that stuff. Because, I do too. Yeah. I, it, it's tools, right? It's like, tools. And so it's like- It's a means to your ends. The, and the human is a collaborator that's always gonna bring a distinctive humanness to the collaboration and nothing else is gonna be able to do that. And the, the computer will do the same from their point of view as the, mm. the technology changes. So like, I have like not, I, I feel like um, using a computer to make something perfect to me is boring now at this point in history, because we all know that computers can do that. And it's not perfect, it's not very inspiring, right? Like uh, there's nothing really to kind of collaborate with if it just does what you want it to do. Um, so like to me, what's fun now is we have great tools that are affordable or free, like I can get auto-tune for free. So what are you gonna do with your free auto-tune? Like you can do a lot of weird things with your free auto-tune mm. and maybe discover some sounds that people haven't heard before or use it in an expressive way people haven't heard before. I mean, people are doing this like crazy, like look at all yeah. the, hy the hyper pop explosion. You know, everyone posts 100 gex, like just like going nuts on like grabbing pop forms and then just like smashing them to pieces at home or with their with friends, you know, like in discords and things. It's like cool to me. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. And like I think like um I mean like sort of like the default is quantization is on. So like you can move away from that if you want to. Like we know what that sounds like. Um mm -hmm. but it's also just all about what calls to people. So like I think like you, I have the same asterisk. Like I'm drawn towards yeah. things that where you feel them breaking, you are um, twisting tools in ways that they weren't meant to be used. Um, but other people like using them for different reasons. I, I totally, I'm glad they do it. I'm just gonna do something different. Yeah, well, I'm not the kind of person that says you have to turn the click off and no grid and you yeah. can't use auto tune and quantization. I think use it, they're creative tools. Absolutely. I mean, you can have a lot of fun with it. And it, and if you use it because you can't sing, mm -hmm. so what? Exactly. Do it. Yeah. Like now you can. Exactly. <laughs> now you have that whole avenue of expression. Yeah. And um, you can say things. That's what, my, 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 whatever my students are like, oh, I can't sing, so I didn't sing on them. Like you, there, is a, there are free auto-tunes everywhere if, the, if you're concerned about hitting the notes. Mm. And if you're not concerned about hitting the notes, then you've got no problem. Yeah. Yeah, I mean- there, there's no reason really, I think, to, uh, it's like you can't fight it anyway. Yeah, that's right. Like it's not going away, it's what's happening. And yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I don't know if you've played with any of the AI stuff, but it is wild and it's going to get much wilder. Like yeah. the jukebox open AI, I mean, open AI, they're like, uh, they make very impressive things. And uh, jukebox in particular, is really interesting. And I used it, uh, bits of it are components of my new album. With Jukebox, 
And I, I can send information about this if you want to share this with people. But basically, yeah, would like to get it in the show notes. Yeah, that'd be great. Like, there's and really easy the setups. Got it. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. It's very. It's like I would not be able to pr- code my own AI to do these things, and you don't have to. You can just use Google Colab. Um, so basically, with Google Colab, someone else has already written the code to use Jukebox, and you get to like run it off of like virtual like Google's computers. Um, and so I'll, I'll give the link. And what you do is the one that I've been using that I like a lot. You upload a short clip of music. Could be your stuff. Could be anybody's stuff. And um, I usually do very short, like like twelve seconds, not that long. And then you tell it, it has a list, a huge list of artists that it's been trained on. So you pick one or a combination of artists. And it's got a huge list of genres, and you can pick one or a combo of those. So last night I was doing the artist was Avril Lavigne, and I, the genres I picked were like trap, EDM, and maybe emo. I was just like put all those together. I gave it twelve seconds of my song. You, you t- tell it I want sixty seconds back, <laughs> where you continue my song as if it was that artist run through those genres, and uh, you wait, and that's what it gives you. And wow. There are some real limitations right now. It's not gonna give it to you in stereo. It's only working in mono. It's, I don't think, it eventually can upsample it to like 44.1 kilohertz for the sampling rate, but it's like not high fidelity. And also it can be very chaotic sounding depending on what you give it and depending on what you ask for. There's actually one more control called temperature, which is basically a measure of how chaotic it's gonna be. So the higher that number, the more chaos. But um, it, you get something, and what I've been telling my students to do is like, take what came back, run it through a site like melody.ml, which is one of those ones that just separates stems for you. Like you give it a full track and it gives you an acapella and it gives you the drums and everything mm-hmm. separated. So run your jukebox output through Melody. You now have these like weird stems with the vocals that you never, oh, I forgot, you can type in lyrics and we'll try to sing <laughs> lyrics cool. for you. You've got the, the vocals you never sang, you've got these weird sounds all there, and you just made a really unique sample library for yourself. And thinking mm. of Ableton sampling, what I wanna do with the stuff I made last night is um, I'm just gonna drop it into Simpler and go to that mode where it's sli- the slicer mode and just, I just got a bunch of samples, I'm just gonna play them from wow. there. And they're cool. cool. They make real. It makes really weird choices and has really interesting sound design um, because I gave it weird things. But uh, a friend of mine, we were working together. He he's been not able to make music lately because he's busy raising uh, multiple children. But he he sings them songs into his uh, iPhone, uh, just like made up songs on the acoustic guitar. With it. And we I just grabbed a bunch of those and I gave them to Jukebox to be like. He's like I don't have time to finish them. I was like, well, let's let the computer finish them. And with that material, where it was just voice and guitar, it worked. We heard him finish the songs, his voice singing the words that we typed in. Uh, and they were, they like those, a lot of those tracks worked. They were believable, could have been released. Uh, but yeah. of course, I'm trying to give it weird things, to get weird things back. But. That's really interesting. I got to check that out. Tell you, there I needs to be a, tried that. a new word for the feeling of hearing your own voice singing something you never sang. Mm. It's a very peculiar sensation that uh, when it happened to me, I was just like, I don't know if this is good or bad, but I definitely am interested in this. Yeah. It was like very uncanny. Uh, well, I guess there's no other choice. <laughs> no, I mean, that's the way forward. And like, yeah, uh, I think these things will be tools, like you said, they're gonna help us just like quantization, just like autotune. And just like those things, people will be really mad and say that's the death of musicianship. And then people will start to use it. There could be serious consequences like in the job market, if you're able to automate songwriting for people who write like commercial songs for, for uh, generating like, um, you know, like music mm-hmm. for commercials, like royalty free stuff, like that is a whole other area, but that's just part of a bigger problem with AI right. that needs to be addressed. Right. But if I'm just limiting myself just to like the, from just looking at it as an artist, I'm just seeing new knobs to turn. Mm-hmm. And I'm I love excited. the idea of putting that into 
breaking it up into stems, which is probably going to confuse that computer yes, algorithm. Yes, it does actually. And it comes back really weird. And yeah. it also like, it, it, it will sometimes just sing in this like these weird non-languages that yeah. are really interesting to me. Um, Cause you can't make that stuff up, you know? Right. Yeah, I, I, I love misusing things like that. Same. So putting that into the simpler, that sounds like a really fun experiment. And yeah, I there's your palette it. of sounds. Exactly. And it's like, no one else has that. It's not on Splice. It's like, yeah. it's just there. Uh, did you use any of that stuff on the new album? I did, on some of the tracks I did. I used, um, I used, <laughs> yeah. Like on, I got a chance to listen to it. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's computer queer. It's called. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so <laughs> I, I I don't <laughs> I know like your reaction like, already. <laughs> yeah, because it's like got me like you know I put it on and I'm like at first I'm kind of like, all right, what just happened? <laughs> like where am I? Because it's it's Changes definitely odd and unusual, and it's yeah I'm. I, you know, as as a fellow producer, one of my big questions is like, well, how the hell did this happen? You know, yeah. <laughs> how did you make this? I mean, it sounds sonically, it sounds incredible. Like, Thank you. Um, it's really clear, crisp, and I appreciate um, that. I feel like from teaching, well I've gotten a lot better at that part of it. Yeah, I didn't used to be very good at that. There's a crazy level of complexity going on. Yeah, but there's also it's, you've kept it like simple on a level too, where it's not like too disorienting. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's probably some moments that are, and I almost pulled some of the more intense ones. And then the last minute I was like, that, they'll probably, someone will probably like that. One person might like that. I think it it's cool. And, and a lot of the tracks are pretty short. Yes, so, I only like so doing short kind stuff of, now. Yeah, it's kind of, um, you know, a, a nice dose. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah <you know. laughs> well, it's like a 20 minute album, which I'm glad about too. So it's like, it doesn't take up too much time. Um, and it's, I wrote them all in a lot of different ways. Like I kind of often have like a entry point into making that's exciting for me. And mm. I'll use that a bunch of times and then it moves, I move on. So like, there's like um, one, one, two of them, I think I was playing with that process I just described with using AI and turning it into stems. And, and that was like exciting for these like two pieces. And then a bunch of them came from me experimenting with um, getting back into making Max for Live devices. Mm. Um, there were a bunch of things I was just like, I feel like I wish I had a device that did this. And as long as it was easy enough to make, I would just like make it quick and then like use it right away. So like they're mm, like- Same philosophy. Exactly. Happen. I mean, one of the things that I, and I also want to give all that stuff away. Like if people want those devices, like I want to share them all. Like one I thought that was really fun to use was just like the regular LFO that the Max, Max Live LFO, which I love is just map automatic automation basically. But yeah, it's the, great. the only thing that is that I, I don't always want that on all the time. And so I just made a, my version of it where the LFO is off by default, but then it has a step sequencer where you can draw in the probability that the LFO will turn on. So mm -hmm. if you can basically set up, or if you just basically want the LFO to like do something like a fill, like at the end of a phrase, you just oh, make it 100% cool. yeah. likely that it happens for like the last like, you know, four notes and then it kicks on and then it kicks off. So I made a few things like that. And then there was a bunch of tracks I made from this one Max for Live device where, I mean, as an Ableton user, I feel like we all love we have to love to some extent the time stretching stuff, like the beats mode, the all those different modes. And I always just wish that could be automated in fun ways. Like it'd be so cool to like have it stretch out in real time and then morph from beats to complex mode, which you can't really do. But I found that, and I found it accidentally just while teaching that there's a max object that has basically the Ableton warping engine built into it and you can change it in real time. So I basically created it as a, it's sort of like, um, I created it as an audio effect. So audio gets played into it. It saves like a little chunk of the audio. And then you can draw uh, on this like little graph, how much you're stretching or compressing the sound by like the um, time division of like the, the, of the measure. 
And then you can also set for each of those like steps. So it's another step sequencer type thing. Mm. You can set whether it's beats, com uh, complex, complex pro, tones. And there's like a few extra ones that this one has. And I use that for, I'd say like half of the album. Um, Cause it's really cool. I think it's really cool to hear rhythmic patterns emerge from something that's been kind of like warped off the grid and then snaps back into place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could hear that. There was, you know, there was a lot of uh, kind of like weaving of rhythms. Yeah, I, was, I would just basically music. layer stuff. And the other thing that is like really, that I love doing is I feel like you can get away with making a, a lot of chaos feel more manageable to the listener if, you are building relationships between the different sounds. So I'm really big on using stuff like the Max for Live Amplitude envelope, um, but I have my own version of it that you, where it can basically turn the loudness of a track into a control signal, but it could also turn the, um, uh, the like a measure of the timbre into a control signal. So it's not loudness anymore, it's how crunchy the sound is. So basically for transients, it spikes and then for like steady state, calm stuff, it goes down. So mm. I have a basically like a giant web of these things watching every track and then saying, oh, well, when, kind of like side chaining, like when the transient is really bright on this one instrument, this other instrument is gonna darken its tone. And I try to do it in ways that are really simple and clear, like for like a reason kind of like, like, so I can play with the idea of like what's in the foreground, what's in the background and have it so that when those things get really like hooked up, like Rube Goldberg machine style, big enough, <laughs> you can then just sort of like change one thing on one track and tons of stuff start to shift because wow. you've built this like web of relations. And it's just yeah. using the, basically, it's, you could basically just do it with the, the envelope uh, follower. Um, and I posted on my Twitter a link to like download a bunch of these things just like for free yeah. from my Dropbox. Cause like- I'm gonna have that in the notes. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. I just want people to play with it and hopefully it's useful. Um, but yeah, that's like- That's a, cool because- That's how the album happened. So much music in the computer, like it doesn't interact. Like the tracks right. are totally separate. Yeah, you, know, you can feel like that. I've got a tape machine here. If if I hit the kick drum too loud on track one, like it screws up track two a little bit. Right, right. Like, kind of like, <laughs> and that's like kind pushes of it out of the way. Which and, you want, I think. Yeah, like I, yeah, I, I, it's, it's one of those problems that we used to have that I miss exactly in the music exactly. now. Yeah, and you actually have to now go back and find a way to invite that sort of thing in because, like, yeah. turns out that was a feature, not a bug. Of making music, like yeah. it's like all about uh, to me. Like I, I, I was drawn to it because I'm really interested in the idea that like all art is like relational. Like everything comes out of relationships, whether it's like you to the medium or you to your history, and you're trying to write something with that in mind. Like mm. so, like I, I feel like if that's true, then every piece of it should also be like built relationships should be woven through as much as you possibly can in the work itself. I just think it creates like a sense of liveliness and the digital space that in, the, that in the real world, if you're in a band and you're jamming, you just know what that, you, everyone knows that. Like, yeah. especially if you like, you're, you're really in it and you lock in and like this thing happens, you're like, oh, that was magic. Like that's this relational thing, but it's mm. really hard to do that when you just have a computer that just does what you want perfectly or is frustrating you because you can't make it do what you want and you're just like, oh, I'm so mad. Like, yeah. you have to find, I, I'm interested in finding ways to explore that. So the whole yeah, album- Because a lot of like that, that happens, yeah, a lot of that happens in real life through a, a look, a smile. Exactly. Or like, you know, you kind of yeah. like lean. Even just you like know. you wander a little closer to the drummer and now you're like yeah. locking into a thing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, I mean, I love that. How do you that. put that in the track? Exactly. <laughs> you know, if you're that's, programming. That's exactly the question. And like in the time when I took took away from recording music and I wasn't making anymore, I, I started, I ended up getting back into music by starting a, a band with a friend of mine and she played drums and I was just doing guitar and she had never played in a band before or played drums before. And we had a lot of fun and our band is still going. Once quarantine is over, we'll, we'll play shows. We added a, a, a basis too. But the whole thing about the band is every song is improvised uh, and every, but they're not like jam songs. Like mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, the drummer, Alex Diakonis, and I will take turns singing on different songs and we make up, we just make it all up. But we like mm-hmm. try to make it sound like a song, like verse, chorus, verse, chorus. It's like freestyling, but not rap. Yeah. And to, it's like everything that I was not getting from the computer, I was just like, I just want pure, the pure blast of like the raw creativity, uh, the spot, like the relational stuff. And hmm. having done that for a bit, I was like, there's gotta be a way to take some of these things that we're finding here and explore them in the DAW. And for me, just like this audio mapping of qualities of one sound to another is like one way to get that. I mean, everyone knows side chaining is cool. It's just another type of side chaining. Yeah. Yeah, just taking it to other levels. Yeah. Like I think of like the one device that I, I have up on my Twitter now that does this, which is called rock asterisk relate is like, mm. I just, the way I describe it, I'm like, it's just super side chaining. You just can side chain anything to anything. So like once it's really, I feel like all DAWs just have that built in. You, you were talking earlier about like jumping between different medium, like in After Effects, when you're doing 2D or working on 3D animation there, you can, drag a, a, like an arrow from any knob to any other knob and they're linked. Like they call it like pick whip, whip pick whipping in After Effects. Mm. This is the same thing, except I had to build it into Ableton to basically be like, I should be able to side chain everything. Like mm. why not? Yeah, how cool is that, that you that, get, that concept inspired that creation? Yeah, I just love, that's what's fun about darting around like that is you're like, you're like, oh, everyone knows that over there. And then you go back to the music world and you're like, I got this thing I picked up from a different different art space. That's cool. I think it's a, yeah. it's a cool extension of the art. I mean, we didn't really talk a lot about Aesthetic Candy, your Instagram with them. Um, I mean, yeah. But that, because that was um, kind of when I saw you pop up again. Yeah. You know, after like a little bit of an absence, maybe. Yeah. Um, or at least on my radar, and um, it was just like the, all these amazing short videos of like a lot of aliens, a lot of aliens, a lot of very <laughs> of aliens. bright colors. But what I think is cool about what you've managed to do there, and, and I hear this now in the music too, is you've managed to capture this emotion. Mm. Like you've got something so uh, like ridiculously silly happening as far as the art goes. Uh-huh. And I mean that in the best <laughs> no, possible no, way. Thank you. I, you know, I, it's I very that. imaginative, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's incredible how the emotion still comes through. I'm glad. Like the feeling. Yeah. And I don't, I wonder if that has to do with your speed too, where, mm. you know, if you overthought it, it might wash it away. I, I feel that way. I feel like I have to, I, I think that is it. I think like the for me the biggest struggle with all these tools is that they're just too slow. It's just mm. like if you want to capture like as compared to like what we we're just talking about, like playing with someone and you give the look or a smile and a nod mm. and like you can like something can just happen so fast that's full of feeling, you know? It's like if I wanted to find that type of experience through animating and you're animating 30 frames has to be one second. And you're trying to like, you're like, so in the weeds. Like right. if I'm like, and this used to happen to me a lot when I first started animating where I've tried to take on a freelance job and just fuck it up because I underestimate how long things will take. And I'll just be mm. like, oh yeah, you want like a dancing alien and he blows out a candle on a birthday cake. That's awesome. And then you're, I'm just in it. And that's like three weeks later and you're like, okay, He's blowing, <laughs> there's a cake. I don't know, I can't get the flame to work. It's just like, it's so slow that like any surprise gets washed out of it. And unless I get to work, I have to like change my approach to working. And like, uh, I think that what the, the best thing for me is to like come to the table with an entry point, something I'm trying to explore a lot of the aesthetic candy animations, the trick that works for me is I'll make something visual. I have no idea what it is or what it's for. I'm just like, I'll make something I think looks cool with characters that I think are fun. I try to make something that like makes me laugh usually with aesthetic candy. And then I bring it into Ableton and I score it. And sometimes I'll like sing things spontaneously. 
and then bring, go back to the animation and then make it so they were singing what I just sang. But because it, it was unplanned, sometimes they'll sing these things where it's just like, I just like improvise something because maybe I was in a bad mood and like this weird thing comes out that feels a little incongruent with like the goofy <laughs> aliens, but I just, I just go with it. And then I feel like sometimes this like sincere, I'm like really interested in like the space of sincere, but it's weird. Cause yeah. I feel like people are always like, be your true self, live your best life. And I'm, and I'm always interested in the idea of like, well, what if my true self is just really weird? <laughs> like <laughs> what, 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 what if it's like, what well, if, I think it probably is for I, most people. I think it is, <laughs> and I'm trying to. I'm kind so of fixated on that. That's why I love <laughs> the idea of like that one I posted recently, where that yellow kind of monster guy is singing about life being easy and stress free, and then the camera slowly pans down. He's like duetting with another monster animal guy that's like growing where his like um, genitals would be, and like <laughs> there's just something to me that's like very funny about the idea of like real heartfelt sincerity and it's not being ironic, but then there's something visually just really off-putting yeah. about this <laughs> display of vulnerability um, is fun for me. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think it comes across on the album too. There's moments, you know, that where it, it's amidst all the madness, there are yeah. these like just <laughs> emotional things that pop out. Yeah. Um, it to me, I felt almost like I was not listening to music, but I was more like watching a dream. Oh, <laughs> I like that. I you really know, am into dreams, so I appreciate that. It, it was almost like a subconscious thing coming out. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it was really nice how there are like these moments where you got these like really sweet melodies that occur sometimes out of chaos or over it or yeah. or as a break from the, from some of the more chaotic things. Yeah, I tried and, to like kind of play with the flow, but also I I mean almost everything on there like lyrically I've been using that same improv approach I used with my band so like mm -hmm. they're just things that really were sincere yeah. and in the moment and but then I, I do love like making like a broken drum and bass beat. And so I'm gonna put that mm -hmm. in there. And I don't know, the reason why, well, I mean, one of the goals for this album was that I was like, people have often criticized things I make as being not consistent enough. Like I would always hear people be like, oh, let that song stretch out longer. You're like changing the feel too fast. Or like, or you're like, oh yeah, that animation is way fast. Like it's like ADD animation. and. I thought for this album, I would just do the opposite of everything that everyone told me to do. I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna make the songs short. They're gonna go exactly where I, they end up going, which I'm trying to let in that like dream. Like I'm trying to let the unconscious like come through. Like I'm not interested yeah. in making things that I can consciously imagine. I'm like only interested in making things that are like unconsciously being created because if I know what it is ahead of time, I have zero reason to make it. I'll learn nothing yeah. from it. All I can do is fuck it up. <laughs> and that's like pop music, right? Where it, it brings it back around and it repeats and it becomes familiar. Right. But that was something I found interesting in the listening was there are these like pop music moments. Right. And these sometimes almost like, it sounds like we're hearing like the newest hot single for, <laughs> you know, Generic American teenager. I, I, well, I mean, that's a, 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 there's a there's a generic American teenager inside me for sure, and <laughs> I uh, love pop music. I mean, I yeah. ended I end the album with that Goo Goo Dolls cover because oh man, that was so funny. <laughs> I liked and you know what? That. I never enjoyed the Goo Goo Dolls so uh, really? much. Really. Well, I'm that, glad well, that I, I never could, really enjoyed them. That's what I'm picking up from. <laughs> but you. it was pretty cool that. Um, you you made it into this like really fun like hyper yeah fast real uh, fast it's the the song name yeah right? uh, a couple of them blend together in my that's head, fair but, uh, name Irish yeah, yeah. I mean <laughs> I, I just kind of I had been like I have that song but you you showed that it's you showed me that it is a good song I it's think a it's nicely a song. written song it you is. know just. I think probably like the hairstyles got in the way, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I do remember things that, like that. that but, um, you know, it, it pulls out the fact that, hey, idiot, this is actually a good song. <laughs> and, and the fun, like reckless 
wildly <laughs> joyous <laughs> rendition you have of it. Thank you. Is, I like is that. It's awesome. I, I love it. And then the production's great and you've got those like really fun, high pitched um, the vocal thing happening. I love the weird vocals. I mean, my favorite vocal trick, which I'd love telling it to everyone because I feel like everyone should use it if they want. You download the free auto tune called Auburn Grailian. Uh, okay, I didn't even know that one. I know, yeah, it's like, a, I don't know how I found it, but I, it's the only one I like using now. It's free, it's great. Uh, it works the way it's supposed to, but it has one knob that is so weird. It's called, <laughs> it's called inertia. And when, it, when inertia is turned up, what it does is it basically like smooths out your vocal melody in the sense that, say you were like switching between two notes really quickly it won't let you switch quickly. It basically like forces the note to stay so that the notes don't change as fast. I guess that's one way of explaining it, inertia. The higher it is, the slower the notes are allowed to move from one to the next. Which, is that to protect it from just auto-tuning like crazy? No, it has a you... different knob for that. So okay. I don't know why it has this knob. Okay. It has like a smoothing <laughs> knob, which is for that, to make the jumps better. But when, the weird thing about the inertia is that when say you were going from like a C to a G and it keeps you at the C, it doesn't change the formants. So your voice mm. tonally, even though you're hitting that same note, now is getting that weird effect where it goes chipmunk or it goes deep, but the note hasn't changed. And that's really hard to do with automation. It's like very annoying to like play with that. And this is just a one knob thing, boom, turn it up. And what's great is you get instant harmonies if you double it and just like take one track, double it, have the second track, have the inertia turned up. It's just gonna hit different notes, but it's in the same key. So, oh, and they have cool. a different tonality because of the format shifting. So you're going to get a harmony part. So I did that wow. a lot on the Google Dolls cover. I mean, I like weird voices. I used, um, what's that thing called? Oh, I used the, actually used the, the, the official Vocaloid plugin for the, there's like two tracks in the middle, I think that are like back to back that are kind of like fast pop ones. That was all mostly like Vocaloid singing with me layered into it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, I just I, love that stuff. I've always liked the, um, it's on, um, what is it called? Uh, Isotope um, mm. Mo Nectar. Oh, you it's know, called. I've never used that. It's kind of like a vocal suite. It's got compressor, gate, reverb, delay, and pitch correction. Yeah. And I've always used it um, for the pitch correction and it's got the formant thing. I love the formant. And you can, I love dropping it down yeah. my voice. Because, <laughs> and like, you don't even really need to bother with the tuning so much, but yeah. you suddenly just get this like thick, heavy. You're like a you character. Know. You're like, get to like That's cosplay. exactly how I see it. And I, I have certain songs that I do where that's the character. That and, makes sense because like, you have a kind of, like last I saw you perform, you were, I mean, it was a while ago, but you were, you. If there's undoubtedly an element of character performance for you on stage. Yeah, I get into that. Like I um, love that. I, I like that too, yeah. Like also, I, don't you I do like vocoder the, or wait, or did you do talk Yeah, box? I used vocoder. Vocoder, yeah. Vocoder, yeah. Yeah, I got it set up in a way where I can hit one button and it mutes my, uh, the synth and turn switches the channels. That's what just, I remember you doing, which was another. I, I mean, I love vocoding stuff. Yeah, too. yeah, it's so fun and and like, because well, the vocoder is like this, like kind of like really mechanical, perfectly in tune. But like yeah. when you sing melodies, like it has this like sad robot. It thing, does. You know? It always sounds like a sad robot. Like there's always like a hint of melancholy. For some and reason. that's what I'm thinking, you know. I'm I'm not just I'm doing a vocoder part. I'm like, yeah. no, now I'm the sad robot. This is the you know, this that is the cosplay. I'm of it. trying to understand my emotions that I think <laughs> I feel. I'm not sure if they were programmed right or something. Yeah, right. But and it's the same thing with like the low voice guy. Like, yeah, what's that guy? He's about? got his own attitude. Kind of makes me think of Ween a little bit. I don't know if you ever liked Ween, but I I, I like that band. I never listened to him too much. Just I mean, a few. You know, might be hard to get into now as a grown up, but uh, <laughs> you know, they had so many character songs and like- well, I, I always think that way when I'm doing songs, I, hmm. who's the character in this song? Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, historically got me in 
hot water and like relationships and things uh, like what why? are you saying here well, it's like, well no i'm no this is from the perspective of like no no it's know. not me i swear yeah. <laughs> but i really like th- that helps me write the music yeah you know that seems um, like a very like generative entry point for you i need that entry point yeah. you know and you were talking about your friends playing i'm going to play with my two buddies tonight and nice. uh we do a very similar thing where we um, jam and we just know each other well enough yeah. playing long enough where we kind of go with each other. So we write the songs on the spot. I love much. that. That's so, to me, so fun. We record everything and we start playing something and it's just, oh, we picked chords and a beat and here and we, we go. The and, song. Now, and, and a lot of times like, 90% of the song comes out the first time you do it. I think so. There's a lot of laboring later. Yeah, that- yeah, we we we'll go back, you know, and we've we massage them in and get the lyrics right, but sometimes yeah. it's like you say that one thing. I know. And it's like, "Oh, there it is." And, and then we we always wind up laughing really hard. Yeah. And, you know, every time we play, we listen back and there's so much laughter. That's so fun. We we've saw it come out of nothing. Totally. It's like, magic. How did that happen? It's actual like, magic. We didn't write it. Right. It is. It's, it, right. it's magic. And it, and it and it's stuff like I would never do on my own. E- yeah. Even if it's a song where I decided to do this chord and say these words, like I never would do that alone. Yeah. I totally, un- I, I relate to that. Like it's just, it's part of the collaboration of it. Like you're, you've cr- constructed this collaboration machine with your friends and your histories. Yeah, it's like a program, like you're saying, where this web of things happen. Yeah. Where I say something and I see my friend on bass laugh, and then he does something silly on his bass as a reaction, and the drummer hits. I love it. And all of a sudden, we're just, you know, I don't know what they're gonna do, but we're always paying attention mm, to what yeah. we're doing. And, and which is so key. It's very open-minded. That's really important. Like you gotta have people that are um, not gonna be like, no bro, what you just said was kind of dumb. Yeah, I that fucks it up immediately. <laughs> yeah, like, it needs to be a safe like, space. <laughs> yeah, it does. And if it's silly, it's silly, but it's amazing what comes out of that. Yeah, I like, like that and, there's a silly component to it and what you're doing. Cause I feel like, I, I like silly in, in music. Well, that's the character thing you were pointing out when yeah. when you saw me play back then. And it's being silly. Yeah, I mean, you're having fun oh. playing dress up, but like that's acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I like that. I think that's just interesting. I and think it's cool to be able to like inhabit like maybe an aspect of your personality or just like a character type you're drawn to, and for mm. the duration of the performance, just be like, this is who I'm going to be, or for the duration of the song, this is what I'm gonna be. To me, that's just so fun and freeing as opposed to being like, I have to confine myself to a specific ideal, a certain kind of cool, a certain kind of successful. It reminds me of like, you ever go to like a Halloween party? Yeah. (laughs) And uh, everyone's in their costume and their mask and they're playing the part. Yeah, it changes the vibe for sure. (laughs) And it's just like this freedom you get all of a sudden. Yeah. Because now you're just going to inhabit this character, and yeah, what it, what would that character do in this situation? And that's a little bit what it's like. Well, and it kind of right. raises questions about like, I, I mean, I and maybe it's beyond our scope for now, but like, I think it's useful as like an artist to whether or not you believe this to um, consider the possibility that like you know that there is no real like authentic you that you have to be. Like maybe there, you feel like there is, but like pretend there isn't. So like, it's just a, it's just a construction out of a collaboration between things. And it's fun to kind of deliberately lean into that and say, mm. okay, so if I could just be anything, well, actually then you have a problem. If you can just be anything, it's overwhelming. And that's why I always talk about entrance points. So like having a character, having a tool you like, having a sound, an imagined audience, a storyline. Like I have a student now who's making really great music and has got this like really, I don't know what the story is of this album, but this definitely like some kind of like uh, concept album. And Mm. one of the things I like about it is that it's not trying to explain to you, the listener, the situation. It's just brings you into this other world. And it's so clear that the story really matters to this person who made it. And I don't get the story, but I feel how like 
I, the, the music is really powerful. It's been infused with this meaning that I don't even have access to. That's like another yeah. example to me of this kind of like identity cosplay that like art can permit you to do. And then you might even find that you like aspects of yourself that you found through that performance. Like the guy with the sunglasses and the vocoder. I feel like you had a song about like a car. Is that possible? You had like a car, a car song? I have uh, this like image of you. Yeah. Just, either it's an image from a song or it's just your vibe, but it was like a kind of like, <laughs> like sort of like spy hunter, like type of uh, like- I could see you getting that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like thing happening. I, it was just like really visually, really clear from your performance. Mm. Yeah. I. I I try to do that, you know. I try to envision it, even if it's not in the song. Yeah, it a lot doesn't of times even I'm trying to picture some kind of scenario happening. This feels like I'm speeding down a car in futuristic laser lights think, or something. I mean, for a while, I was blocked on writing anything on the computer, and the only way I was able to do it was to write music to my animations because they were great mm -hmm. at entry points. Um, yeah. And then, like that, got me kind of unblocked. But it's like um, I feel like. There's the just something really fun when you like approach art making as not just like I'm making this piece, but I get to like kind of like make up who I am. And that's like what my new album, like that's like kind of where I wanted to, just to bring it to that for a moment, because I called it computer queer because I've been really thinking about like my own identity and like, you know, in this in this introspective quarantine times and you know going to therapy and you know whatever just in that kind of world everyone seems like people are introspecting and like i really wanted to make something where i felt like i was not trying to like fence myself in to please anybody even if it made an album that no one liked and like that's like the spirit of it and like hmm. it was exciting it's exciting for me to like kind of reconnect with art as actually liberating me from trying to be something I'm not and giving me a chance to explore what I am. It's just really different than when I was like in a band trying to be like famous. Cause it's like, I was trying to do it in a certain way. Um, mm. And this is the flip of that. It just took a little while. It took a while to get there. It, I think it's an ongoing process. I think it is too. You know, like a lot of times when we, make our art, we're trying to express ourselves, you know, and you're like, all right, well, where am I? Who would I, who do I believe? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You exactly. need sort of like the vehicle. I think so. To do that through, I, you know, whether it's definitely. the character or whether it's the animation, it, yes. it gives you, well, then you, you get that stuff out. But if you don't have that, I find it nearly impossible. I agree. To just do anything I, without I, I think something. It's, I have a thousand percent agree. Always about that entry point. I mean, I think, that actually makes me think about how I feel like a lot of there's the there's a common idea that like you have to be like in a certain amount of pain to make art or to make good mm -hmm. art, and I extremely disagree with that. Um, but I also sympathize with that perspective because like often when we're in a lot of pain, we're caught in like some bad situations. What those come with is an entry point. <laughs> like you're really stuck in that space, and that's what yeah. you bring and you have a way right into creating. But it's not that it was the pain, it was just that that was the entry point. You're, you're yeah. caught by it. Um, but like for me, it feels really liberating to make something where it's like, I'm actually like feeling my own growth happening from the process mm. of making it. And like, that's so cool. I never had that before, even though I've been making stuff for a long time. Mm. And I'm just excited to keep doing, like the moment I finished that album, I was like, let's just keep going. I, let's, I want to do more. <laughs> I have like so new nice. ideas and I like, can't wait to like try stuff out. I love Ableton 11 and I'm into the uh, random thing they have, you know, with the uh, yeah. the chance that a note fires. I love that. Uh, that might be one of the best new features. It's so cool. <laughs> I've been obsessed with making a genre called splice core, which is just music made out of splice samples, like like <laughs> over the top, like all splice. And so uh, the first track on my album was my first foray into doing what I consider splice core, where I just nice. wrote something that randomly grabbed splice samples and then randomly <laughs> Use the, use the note randomness thing to create patterns out of them. I just separated them sonically so that they wouldn't fight with each other. And um, yeah. I like that piece. 
You know, I, when I was listening to that, I was thinking to myself, I don't think there's a note in here that's longer than a quarter note. <laughs> that's right. They were all quarter notes. Because <laughs> it's so <laughs> chopped. And... Yeah. The only way I changed, I wanted to vary that a little bit, but I couldn't think of an easy way. And then I, while I was basically, I, rec- I basically just recorded that one by like, uh, yeah. by like writing it to disc, like as it was playing live. Oh, cool. And I just changed the BPM in, re- in, in real time. Hey, Ben, it's okay that we have neighbors. Come here. Come here. <laughs> yeah, that was the you only know, way you I got could me bury thinking um, when we're you're talking about authenticity yeah. and how we we want to be authentic, and <laughs> I think we get confused by thinking that that's a static thing. Like, yeah, yeah. Me, I'm me. This is who I am. But like, really, who, you're a million shades of gray. Oh, absolutely. And variations. I so love, I've authenticity love that. is. Yeah is really like a fluid thing. I think that's so well put. I like feel like that's really strongly kind of like at the heart of like the stuff that I think about. That's like really comes down to that, like, that you're not mm. a fixed thing in time. Mm. So and it's okay to have that silly song with-, with Absolutely. You know, and then- And have the then genres also, jump because that's more honest, I think to like, it is. It's like alive. more authentic to be Ironically. all over the place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. I think it is. No, I mean because the to be consistent is really a product of brand. Uh, that's like a branding thinking, which is okay and and useful, but like is not necessarily like uh, natural. Like meaning, I wouldn't say not, shouldn't say natural. I would say that that's doing the same thing over and over again. I think in art is usually, in my experience, more often a sign that you're stuck. Not that you have a cool brand, um, but like there's a value to having a recognizable style because you can sell it. Yeah. And people know yeah, what they're gonna true. get. But that's they're like a different of concern that I'm not <laughs> engaging with at the moment. Yeah. And I don't, and I, I agree with your point that I think your point about the fluid nature is much more, that's the reality. I mean, if we can call yeah. it that, like, I mean, while I was making this album, I was doing a lot of um, reading and listening to people talking about quantum physics. I got just like really psyched to like learn about <laughs> that more. And just like, you know, the more you just dig into like the people who are trying to actually understand what the universe is made of, like the crazier it gets. And mm. like, you know, we can't even, we can't even find time literally, like physically, really in the universe, like there's no time particle. Uh, there's like, uh, there's all these things on like a like quantum level that are just like confusing and frothy and seem to me to be like all about relationships that like, hmm. particle, like particles come out of relationships, not that relationships come out of particles. And so in that case, the flux is more at the heart of the thing than the thing if that makes sense. Yeah, that's weird, but I, I think I get it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, I'm explaining it very poorly because I am not a- uh, Well, time, so, right? Like we can, we all understand what we're talking about. Yeah. But when you try to like really put your finger on it, like what is nothing that? to put your finger yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. And like, you and know- It's a relationship. It's, it it's is. A, and it's very determined by where you are in space and your relationship to something else, right? Like I can never- Well, I think that's what Einstein figured out, right? Exactly. Yeah. We can't speak in real time to Mars, right? Because there's no universal clock. I have a clock, Mars is a clock. It runs differently because of the way that space, because space is shaped not the same everywhere and that affects time. Uh, but like, why? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. like, I do think that stuff is interesting to look to when we think about like, oh, you know, do I have a consistent, do I ought to, ha- should, I, should I have a consistent self? You know, like maybe it just depends on what you think a self is. Mm. Like maybe it's better to think of it the way you just described as something that is fluid as a process. And it goes back to what I'm thinking about with art. I want to identify with the process just like I want to think of myself as a process, not the self as the finished product that I must like protect or or tend to um, to keep from changing. Right. It's a lot, That's, but this is just how I live. <laughs> I hear you though. Um, it, it is a lot to think about and it's weird how it connects. <laughs> I think so it's many things. so weird. I love that about it. Yeah. I guess that's where you're finding a lot of the fun and 
going back and forth in the different mediums. And I think it's really neat how it's coming together. You know, sometimes glad, these yeah. things are like all over the place in the earlier stages, but yeah. for you, it really seems to be like coalescing. And it feels like it finally now is. They feed each other. Like I kept everything separate for a while. And like, I was like, oh, I could never post that kind of music on the visual account or whatever. But now it's all this, everything. It's just all, yeah. it's just all me. And I'm hoping that the people who don't like that will leave. <laughs> and then the people who do like that will stick around and more will come. And that way uh, I don't have to, I don't have to like worry about how I'm curating myself. Yeah, well, it seems to me to be like a deeper product. Not, to, yeah. not that I like that particular word, but uh, artifact, let's say. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, because, uh, yeah, like, um, and I kind of got to see this unfold a little bit when, you, when your aesthetic candy Instagram started up. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like, whoa, what the hell is this? You know, like, <laughs> well, he's, he just like took a total left turn, yeah. you know? Right, right. But then I started to hear the music coming in through it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, like, look at what's happening here. Yeah. And just, uh, you know, in the last few days now, getting to listen to the album, Yeah. it's like, okay. Like, and now you're talking about how all this programming is factoring in. And yeah. um, I think it's a really cool kind of like blossoming or, um, it feels that you know, way, actually. I I'm this, glad that you, I appreciate that. It makes me feel good to hear that it's like you're the, experiencing the, uh, that way. Your little universe is starting to orbit now and <laughs> you're getting this thing happening. Yeah. That's that's really interesting and, and fun to watch. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I love being able to talk about it with you. You're a great conversational partner about it all. Yeah, you make it easy, man. Oh, <laughs> it's well, good to talk to you. It's yeah, been so long. I know, it has. I'm glad we did this. Um, maybe we'll wrap up and I'll, but we should talk about you uh, coming to NYU and doing some guest talks. I mean, yeah, not literally likewise. being, but on Zoom, which is where I teach from anyway. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so let's wrap it up. Let's okay. send people your way. Um, sure. Where do you like to send them the most? I mean, I feel like if they Just go to my places. Instagram, everything links from there. So it's like mm -hmm. aesthetic candy, but there's an underscore between aesthetic and candy. Right. I see you've got the website, adamrockshar.com. Yeah, too, but I don't so. really use it. Okay. It's there well, though. It's there it does and have I should some update it. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they, um, all, they all like link you everywhere. I try to make Yeah, I noticed that actually, because I, I found the old link on my site from like 2013 oh, wow. where uh, I think I have a link to your Tumblr. Tumblr. I, but you have it set up to go to your, yeah, that's which because, I thought was well, great. I learned that was because I got uh, interviewed by someone and they, uh, by Second 74, right? Who make Macs. Mm -hmm. And they, for some reason, put my main website as my Tumblr from back then. And I was really embarrassed. I had to run back to it and just make it a, a link to, yeah. uh, to something else. Yeah, Tumblr, MySpace yeah. type thing. I mean, yeah, Tumblr, right. when they took away the porn, it just went away. <laughs> That's what it seems like to me. <laughs> and it, it was pretty hot for a while. And then uh, yeah. you just don't hear about anyone on there anymore. I mean, Yahoo either. bought it. They did kick a, take off anything they thought was like adult content, which killed mm -hmm. a lot of the people who were using it, who were just like, it wasn't, weren't making necessarily pornography, but just like wanting to talk about sex. And it just messed up the community, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't really know, I'm not a Tumblr expert, yeah. but that's what I've been told. Yeah, I've mostly had one just to kind of like whenever I posted a blog, it also fed here. That, right. You know, like you kinda, yeah. Like, so I had one there. So I wasn't in the community. But I'll tell you what, as like a English teacher, there were a lot of kids. Yeah. Like, you know, like teenagers, ninth, tenth graders that were on there writing. Yeah. It was a really nice this, like, space. Spot. <laughs> Maybe it's the porn. I don't know, but, <laughs> they were all but writing. But they were they were writing. Yeah, you know, and um, I I don't know if there's anything. I don't know what they're doing now. I don't know either. I actually, maybe they. I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, yeah. uh, you should ask your class because I'd be curious where people are doing that. Because Tumblr was always like really nice for for writing, like a safe space for that. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Not writing. But anyway, not writing on. Um, on like uh, TikTok, I haven't seen a lot of like no <laughs> <laughs> any like TikTok like fanfic uh, accounts, but yeah, I do like that idea. 
Well, if I guess if they do go to your Tumblr, they'll they'll <laughs> tumble <laughs> along to some of the more official, <laughs> the more spots modern, to modern find you. places. Yeah. But yeah, I think uh, people should check it out. And the album comes out April first. That's right. Which it's is pretty soon. soon yeah, about it's going to be. So. Yeah, I just did through Distro Kid, self released. Yeah. Would be up on all the places. So I think this will probably go out before then. So it'll be kind of to hype the album nice. a little bit. And they can pre-save um, it on Spotify. Yeah. But I don't know what that if, does. If not, uh, it'll be right. It'll be available now then. <laughs> exactly. Go to, what, it's, what's uh, today's date, audience? Yeah, check the date. If greater than April 1st. It's after April 1st. Yeah, sure. it's, it's as, as Rash Core, which I feel like maybe I should have gone by Aesthetic Candy, but... I know. I kind of like the idea of identifying myself by my last name, even though it's in reverse. And yeah. there's something. I don't know. There's something magic to that for me at the moment when I picked it. So hopefully, people will be able to find it. I think you know, if they want to find it, they'll find. it. I agree with you. And we'll we'll help them with some links in the show notes. Great. I appreciate that, Brian. <laughs> nice. Cool. Thank well, you so thank much you for so having much. me. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time. Really. Oh, it's like um, my pleasure for sure. Cool. We'll probably have to do this again because uh, even though we've been doing it a while, I feel like we're cutting ourselves short. I feel like so we could we'll, keep uh, going. And we've, yeah. <laughs> we've, there's even that deleted content before we started that yeah. there's so many things that could happen. Right. So yeah, okay. We'll, we'll come back to this. Um, and thank you. Thank everyone for listening. Have a good day, everyone.